We're going to talk about taking your stand in faith next. The program you are about to watch is part of a free series we are making available to you as a gift from Greg Fritz Ministries entitled Dare to Believe. Visit gregfritz.org to download the MP3s and watch the streaming video for free by entering code FREE at checkout. Are you tired of hearing bad news? Tune into the good news of the gospel. Welcome to Good News with Greg Fritz. Hello, I'm Greg Fritz. Welcome to the Good News program. I'm so glad you're with us today. We are actually concluding a series that I've been on called Dare to Believe. If there was ever a time to believe God and walk by faith and not by sight, it's now. And we have gotten into the nuts and bolts of faith. In fact, we defined faith and talked about what it is. We've talked about some substitutes that people use for faith, and we've gone into great detail about that. And now we're talking about how to release your faith. And if you'd like all of this teaching, it is very valuable. I think it's very I think it's some of the most practical teaching, helpful teaching I've ever done. Because in order to receive from God the all of the wonderful blessings of his grace, you receive it by faith. All of them by faith. You don't earn the blessings, you receive them by faith. So it's important for us to understand faith and know how to get in faith and know how to walk by faith and pray the prayer of faith. So for all of this teaching, my study notes are on my website. They're free. You can go to the free study notes section and look for Dare to Believe, and you can download those. We have all of this teaching in streaming video and downloadable audio. It's also free. I have an entire section in my on my product page called uh, free downloads and you can go there and get I think it's close to 200 messages now that we've done video messages and one of the things I like to tell people is you know this series dare to believe these 20 episodes cost me six thousand dollars to produce and we're giving it to you free so you can't beat that deal since when have you got an offer to get six thousand dollars worth of anything for free but you can do that if you go to our website and of course it's not the production quality that we're even interested in it's the content and there's not you can't just go everywhere and get your faith fed and cause your faith to be increased but we've provided a lot of material to do just that and so we'd love for you to take advantage of it I want to go over these four points how to release your faith once you understand the principles of faith there comes a time when you're ready to receive something from God to receive something that you desire from God or that you need something God has promised you need to have a point in time where you release your faith and I have four simple steps that we can take in order to release our faith number one find a promise from God that promises uses you that thing that you desire and, and, and begin to put that promise, meditate on it, put it in your heart and in your mouth, begin to allow that promise to become real to you. <clears throat> Number two, release your faith by prayer or by speaking at a point in time. And we look at Mark eleven twenty three, 23, Mark eleven twenty four. You can also release your faith by having hands laid on you if it's prayer. Uh, there, there are scriptures, uh, Mark 16, 15, and James 5, 14, and 15, that talk about the laying on of hands to receive healing. That's another way that you can release your faith or be anointed with oil. But you have to have a point in time where you actually release your faith. Number three, believe that you have received your answer. And we're talking about that now, and we're going to continue that. And then number four, at, uh, finally, you take your stand in faith and you don't waver. James said <clears throat> that if you're going to pray the prayer of faith, that you have to ask in faith nothing wavering, no doubting. For he that wavers is like a wave of the sea driven and tossed by the wind. And he said, let not that man suppose that he'll receive anything from God. So the prayer of faith doesn't work for people who waver or people who doubt. And that really does bring us to our, our, our third point that we're talking about, and that is Mark eleven twenty four. When you pray, believe that you receive. 
Now, do your homework. Listen to the, the, the messages up till now and you, you can catch up with us. But you do have to do your homework. Have a scripture you're standing on. Have some basis for what you're asking God to do. And basically what that does is it means that you and God are on the same page. That your desire is His desire and His desire is your desire. Your will is His will. His will is your will in that situation. If you have any doubt in your mind that the thing you're asking for is not God's will, the prayer of faith will not work. It would be like uh, the prayer for salvation. If we were to have an invitation in church and say, now, if you would like to be saved, we know that God saves. If you're not saved and you'd like to be, come down to the altar and we're going to pray. And we're not sure if God will save you. We don't know if he will save you. We do know he saves, but we're not sure he's going to save you. Just come down and we'll pray and we'll find out. Uh, it, that won't work. The prayer of faith doesn't work with that kind of doubt. The thing that makes the prayer of faith work and that makes it the prayer of faith is the fact that when you pray, you believe that you receive. And that's so important that we understand what that means. That means that faith is the substance of the things you hope for. Once you get to that point in your prayer, and that's why we don't need to rush to that point. Once you get to that point, everything changes. I believe that it's mine. I have it now. I ask God for it. I know it's his will. I know that he said that if I ask him, he would do it. So therefore, when I pray, it's done. Because God does his part. God's good at doing his job. When you doubt after you pray, if you don't believe you receive, you're doubting God. And you're doubting God's word. You're saying, in effect, you're not going to do it for me. God, you're not doing what you said you would do. You're not being faithful to your word. And that's all doubt and unbelief. Now, you may not say that consciously or verbally, but when you refuse to believe or when you waver after you pray the prayer of faith, it's as if you're telling God that he's not going to do what he said he would do. You're saying, I did my part, but God's not going to do his part. And that's doubt. And that's why it won't work with, with, uh, with that kind of doubt. I have a, a great scripture that makes this point in its 1 John 5, 14 and 15. And I took a lot of time in the last session to explain why it's so important to believe you receive when you pray and how to do that. But the main reason that people pray the prayer of faith and then they don't follow it up with faith or believing they receive is they just aren't sure God heard them or they're not sure that, that God is really going to act in their behalf. That's doubt. This scripture, 1 John 5, 14, gives us the answer to that. And it is 1 John 5, 14. Now, this is the confidence that we have in him. That if we ask anything according to his will, he hears us. Now, I gave you scriptures that talk about how God knows your thoughts. He knows every word in your mouth. His eyes are on the righteous. His ears are open to their prayers. This scripture agrees with those. And it simply says that we have this confidence in God. That if we ask anything according to his will, that's, that's where you do your homework. You go to the Bible, open your Bible, find scriptures that promise the thing that you desire. You say, well, the pastor does that. No, you do this for yourself. You, you have a, a Bible, you have a relationship with God, and you're capable of finding and knowing the will of God. If you're praying for something and you don't know it's his will, then you don't need to be praying the prayer of faith about that. You need to wait until you're sure that this is God's will for me. God wants me to have this. It's, he's stated it. I know it's his will because that's where your confidence comes from. You know that if you ask something according to his will, first of all, you know he hears you. And that's powerful. Even though the room may be quiet and you may be the only one there and you may be praying to a, you know, uh, you, may, you may just feel like your prayers are only making it to the ceiling. But if you know you're praying the will of God, then you know he hears you when you pray. No question about it. 
Not nine times out of 10, not 99 times out of 100, but 100 times out of 100. When you pray the will of God, He hears you when you pray. Now, He goes on to say, if we know He hears us, whatever we ask, then we know that we have the petitions that we've asked of Him. Isn't that powerful? That is that goes right along with Mark eleven twenty four. If you take these scriptures and put them beside Mark eleven twenty four, you have the recipe for praying the prayer of faith, and they are as follows: Who, what, whatsoever things you desire when you pray, believe you receive them, and you shall have them. That's Mark eleven twenty. That's the prayer of faith. Now, take First John five fourteen. This is the confidence that we have in Him, that if we ask anything according to His will, He hears us. So He's saying, when you pray the prayer of faith, you know He hears you. And if you know that, verse 15, if we know He hears us, whatever we ask, we know that we have. Think about that. We know that we have. We know that we have. When you pray, believe you receive. We know that we have. Meditating on these promises, he went on to say the, the petitions that we've asked of him. In other words, your prayer worked. God heard your prayer. God's going to do what you ask him to do. Your job is to stand in faith. Your job is to remain steadfast in faith. God heard my prayer. God's going to do what he said he would do. When you meditate on these two verses, they will prepare you to pray for any, any promise that God has made because faith works the same way in every area. And the reason I've taken time to talk about faith and especially the prayer of faith is because all of us who are born again have prayed the prayer of faith for salvation. We have done that. But what I want you to do, what God wants you to do is expand your horizons Begin to use your faith for other things. You say, well, how do I get that? Do you just beg God until He does it? Or does God watch you suffer until He decides to intervene? No, you pray the prayer of faith for healing. You pray the prayer of faith for finances. You pray the prayer of faith for victory. You pray the prayer of faith for direction. You pray the prayer of faith for favor. Whatever you need in your life, you can exercise faith and get into faith by using these same principles. And God wants you to do it. You know, He doesn't want you just to go along and do the best you can. One of the examples I gave was sleep. Uh, there are promises in the Bible that promise you good sleep. But how many Christians go along and have trouble sleeping at night and wake up tired and take sleeping aids and try to get some other method to work for them so they can get a good night's sleep when God promised that? And you might think, well, God knows I'm having trouble sleeping. I mean, I, He sees me. It, it, why doesn't He just do something? That's not how it works. But if you'll step back, get those scriptures, see how God's promised to give His beloved sleep, and use Mark eleven twenty four 24 and 1 John 5, 14, or get somebody to agree with you and release your faith at the point in time that I believe that I receive good sleep. Father, I need sleep. You promised me sleep. You said that you give your beloved sleep, and I'm your beloved. So today I'm asking you for good sleep, sweet sleep, restful sleep. In Jesus' name, amen. What's your responsibility from that point on? Believe that you have received it. When? When you pray, believe that you receive it. Now, you get into faith mode. You stand. That's our fourth point. Take your stand in faith. Take your stand in faith. There are plenty of scriptures that talk about standing, and I'm not going to read them all. But, um, but James 1 says, Let him ask in faith nothing wavering, for he who wavers is like the wave of the sea, driven and tossed by the wind. Let not that man suppose he'll receive anything 
from God. So wavering faith doesn't work. So you've prayed for sleep. You've got the scriptures. You've meditated on them. You've done your homework. You prayed the prayer of faith. You believe you receive when you pray. Now, stand. Take your stand. I'm standing on the fact that God heard me. I believe that I have it. Well, uh, does that mean that I'm going to automatically just like fall to sleep instantly and sleep. No, you may have to stand on the Word of God. You may not see an instant manifestation to your prayers, but your job is not to make it happen. Your job is to believe you receive. There's a big difference, you know. There's a difference between feeling well and believing you receive your healing. We're required to believe we receive our healing, not necessarily to instantly feel well this, as soon as we pray. You've got to determine that my faith is going to be in the promise of God, not in my feelings, not in the symptoms. So you're gonna, you're, you take your stand. 1 Corinthians 15, 1, Moreover, brethren, I declare to you the gospel in which I preach to you, which also you received, and in which you stand. We stand. And here's a, a great verse on standing, um, Ephesians chapter 6, verse 11. Put on the whole armor of God that you may able, be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. We do not wrestle against flesh and blood, blood but principalities, powers, rulers of the darkness of this age, spiritual wickedness in heavenly places. Therefore, take up the whole armor of God that you may be able to withstand in the evil day and having done all to stand, stand therefore. So he says, stand, stand, stand. When do you stand? When you believe you receive. That's the time to take your stand, take your position in faith. I think it's interesting here. He says, that we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but principalities, powers. There are demon forces in this world that don't want you to receive from God. And when you pray the prayer of faith, they will come against you and they will try to make you step back and release your hold and, and give up believing God. It, it, it could be a fight. It can be a fight that you have to stand and resist doubt and resist unbelief. You know, it's amazing how easily some people give in to doubt and unbelief and act as if, you know, God's not going to do what He said or God's not a faithful provider. God's not going to honor His Word. God can be trusted. When you pray the prayer of faith and you believe you receive, it's time to stand. And I've got two points when it comes to standing. First of all, if you believe you receive, when you prayed, the first thing you would do is you would thank God. I mean, think about it. If, if, if faith is the substance, now I've asked for something that God's promised. I really want this to be true in my life. I want to receive it. And I prayed for it. And now I believe I've received it. What is the natural next step? It would be to say, thank you, Lord. Thank you for doing what I ask you to do. Thank you for hearing my prayer. Thank you for answering my prayer. Thank you that it's mine. I have it now. You would thank God for it. You know, act like you would act if you had the actual manifestation. That is faith. That will help you. Let me give you some scriptures for that because it's important to understand how this fits into the process. Philippians 4, 6 says, Be anxious for nothing. But in everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. Now, in the natural, we wouldn't really thank someone for something until we actually had it in our hand. I know that's how we work. If you ask somebody, you know, I would like to, I would like to borrow ten dollars, and uh, and if you didn't see them for a while, and then like. Five days later, you see them and they say, here, here's that $10 that, that you needed. I have it for you. And then you would take it and you would say, thank you. I really appreciate this. I'll pay you back or whatever your arrangements are. But you wouldn't really thank them until, until you made that exchange. But with God, faith is that exchange. Faith is the substance of the things hoped for. So when you pray... You believe that it's yours. 
And if you believe that, if faith is the substance, then you act as if you have it. And the first thing you would do is say, thank you, Father. Thank you for giving me the thing I asked for. Thank you for answering my prayer. Thank you for sweet sleep. I am so grateful to you for giving me sleep. I, I know you promised it. I know you want me to have it. And I want it. And I prayed the prayer of faith at a moment in time. And I believe that I've received sweet sleep. Thank you. Thank you for doing it. Thank you for giving me sleep. And, and that's the, the natural reaction. Abraham, the Bible says that Abraham was strong in faith. If you want to be strong in faith, follow Abraham. Well, what did he do? He was strong in faith, giving glory to God, being fully persuaded that what he promised he was able also to perform. So once again, you see Abraham who was believing he had a son before he had a son. He was calling himself the father of many nations before he had his son. And he was giving glory to God. He was thanking God as if he had his son. That's how he filled in that gap between the prayer and the manifestation. He filled it in by faith. And rather than let his faith be neutral or be neutral in his thinking about it, saying, well, I'll just wait, he filled that gap with proactive praise. He was thanking God. When you praise God, it's 100% faith. You don't have room for unbelief when you're thanking God for doing what He said He would do. It's a powerful way to energize your faith day in and day out. And, and then let's say you go to bed that night and you have a rough night and you don't sleep well. What are you going to do? Are you going to get up the next day and say, well, I guess it didn't work. God didn't do what He said. No, faith believes you receive when you pray. So you ignore the symptoms. You ignore the results. You ignore the contrary evidence. And you, and you praise God that He's heard your prayer, that He's answered your prayer. And, and for goodness sakes, don't go around the next day saying, man, I can't sleep. I have such a hard time sleeping. I wish I could sleep. I had a terrible night's sleep. I feel terrible today. I, I need a good night's sleep. What you're doing is you're not acting as if you believe you were. Do you understand the difference? And it's not that God's going to disqualify you on some technicality. But faith is an inward conviction and it's an outward expression. So for your prayer of faith to work, you pray the prayer of faith. You say amen. You thank God for the answer. You take your stand and you don't waver. And you follow that up with your confession or your profession. And you thank God for giving you a good night's sleep. Now, I didn't say you go around and lie uh, about sleeping. You don't, if you had a horrible night's sleep, don't go around and say, I slept great last night. That's not true. What is true is, I believe that I've received sleep. And you can make that statement. How did you sleep last night? Well, I don't want to talk about last night. I do want to tell you what I believe God for. I sleep well. I have sweet sleep. I rest at night. I have this because I prayed and God answered my prayer. I'm so thankful to God that He gives me sleep. You see how you fight that battle? You stand strong because he that wavers is like a wave of the sea and let not that man think that he'll receive anything from God. So when you take your stand, don't try to take your stand in faith before you pray or before you speak, before you release your faith. Just prepare yourself for this moment. Prepare yourself because there may be a fight to faith, and that's fine. That's a fight we win. So you, you prepare yourself by feeding on the words and getting familiar with the promise. Then you release it in, by prayer or a prayer of agreement or laying on of hands, whatever the case may be. And from that moment on, you say, thank you, Lord for doing what I ask you to do. From that moment on, you speak about that thing in the past tense. Thank you that I sleep well. Thank you that I wake up refreshed. Thank you for giving your beloved sleep. That doesn't mean that you're going to sleep good every minute of every second of every night from the time you pray that prayer. You may have to stand in faith and you may have to wait for the manifestation. The Bible says that when you Pray, believe you receive it, and you shall have it. In other words, it will come into manifestation. 
maybe not immediately, but time is not important when it comes to faith. In other words, there's a rest in faith that says, it's mine, I have it now. I'm not going to be moved by, by doubt, unbelief, or circumstances, or symptoms. I believe God. And whenever that subject comes up, I speak of it in a past tense. Thank God I sleep. I have good sleep. I guarantee you this will change your life. If you've prayed prayers and not given any time in between the amen and the manifestation, if you've prayed prayers and asked God to do something and immediately said, well, I don't think that worked. I can't sleep. I wish I could sleep. Everybody else seems to be able to sleep but me. I don't know why I stay up all night. I don't know why I can't get a good night's rest. That is doubt and unbelief. Say, yes, but it's true. No, it's factual. Truth trumps facts. What is truth? The Bible. When you take your stand on the Word of God, you're saying, let God be true and every man a liar. God said He was giving His beloved sleep. I asked Him for sleep. I stood on the Scripture. I thanked Him for doing it, and I'm not backing down. And I could stay up every night for the rest of this month, and I'm still not going to back down. Some of the greatest faith victories you've ever heard of have happened just like this. There are, I've been reading the faith books for, for months now, preparing for these messages. And I'm going to tell you, some of the greatest giants in faith that you've heard of went through battles just like this. They prayed a prayer and saw no results, but they refused to back down. They refused to give up. Nobody can make you give up, not, not, not your neighbor, not the devil, not circumstances. You hold that power with your own will. You can choose to believe God and stand against circumstances and stand against contrary evidence, and you can receive those things in manifestation if you don't give up. Let me just end with this. Whatsoever things you desire when you pray, Believe that you receive them, and you shall have them. That is a promise, not from me. That's a promise from God. Well, I hope you've enjoyed this series. I want to just encourage you to follow up on this teaching. We have a lot of information on our website now on faith. You can get this series. I encourage you to go get this series. It's powerful. Understanding faith, most of the facts and figure, I mean, the principles we talked about in this series is in this audio series, Understanding Faith. It's on our website in a downloadable version. It's in USB. It's in CD. We would love to get that to you. Uh, if you'll call our helpline, you can order that today. We want to get these materials into your hands because you know what? The world is a better place when the people of God believe God, when they dare to believe. Well, we're going to continue uh, the Good News programs with a new series starting next. And so you don't want to miss that. Be sure and be with us. Until then, remember this. The good news is so good, the bad news doesn't matter. To order your copy of this series, call our helpline at 918-749-7744 Monday through Friday from 8 a.m. to 4 p.m. Central Time. Join us next time for Good News with Greg Fritz 